Hi my loves, Rich Rising, how are you? How is the universe's favorite doing? So today's lecture, we are going to be focusing on something that is really important to know, okay? Um, really quick though, I do have kind of like a second part to this lecture where we go into a form of evil eye, what it is, how you know it's working against you or it's trying to work against you, and then how to get rid of it or how to protect yourself from it. So if you're interested in that, um, that is on my membership site for my mystery school students, which is the last tier, the gamma frequency. So if you guys are interested in that, definitely go check that out. Um, Information will be in the description box below as well. And also make sure to check the pinned comment for any important information about readings and things like that. So they say that love and hate are the same thing or operating on the same coin, just different sides of it, right? And in some ways that's true, but love is a frequency that you have to get on that level to experience it, right? But love is also an energy that, even if you're not on the level, it could still be felt because that frequency almost operates like a sun and it sends rays out. So everyone can feel the sun, right? but not everybody can receive the sun's codes of consciousness. It's the same with love. It's like you could see it and you might even be able to feel it at times, but if you're not operating on it, you aren't it, right? And love is everything. That's another thing too. Love is not just love and light. Love is everything. Love is love and light and love and darkness. So love actually consumes all dark things. Um, because darkness, love works with darkness as well, and darkness consumes, it takes. So uh, all low emotions um, that people would attribute to hate, love consumes, right? And love is not afraid of, it actually eats it for breakfast. So I wouldn't necessarily say they're operating on the same coin, but I know what people mean when they say that. They're more so talking about the concept of obsession. So... There's two types of obsessions that exist. Think of a number one fan of a artist, right? So you have somebody who will stream this person's music 24-7, is in love with them, has an account created for them, pictures all over their wall of this person. They're at the front row of every concert. They know every lyric to their song. You know, they make it very known that they are in love with this artist right? This is what you call a number one fan. People will say it's an obsessed fan, but it's a light fan because it's a fan that makes it known that they're obsessed. They're not afraid of it. They love this person. They worship this person. They are obsessed with this person. And although that's not always healthy, it's a, it's a light form of it, right? But then you have dark obsession which is obsession that operates in the darkness so this is somebody who is just as obsessed as that number one fan but in a way where they have to mask it through dislike because they cannot allow their obsession to be known to the public right or sometimes they're ashamed of their obsession or sometimes they are obsessed with someone to try to take their place so they can't give light to their supposed opposition or competition when really there's no competition right so this is someone who acts just like a number one fan they know everything they know all of this person's music they know um, everything that this person does or doesn't do they know when this person went to this place they know when this person listened to this song they know when this person did this and when this person did that but the difference is they can't tell anyone about this, right? Think about how a lot of haters of a person or a thing formed, not organically, but they formed from being a lover. This is what you call the fall or the dissension, right? 
they were very tuned into a person. They were really tuned into you because now this is about you. They loved you. They were tuned into you. They gravitated towards you for a reason. A lot of people don't understand that when someone is put on their path, it's normally for a reason. Some sort of lesson or blessing. So they were gravitated towards you because they felt your energy. They felt what you could do for them. Right? And a lot of times, your haters didn't start off that way. They were corrupted to be this way. Okay? So they loved you at one point or they really liked you at one point they were obsessed with you at one point if someone asked them about you they would say good things but then one day that changes they get corrupted by whatever sometimes it's their inner demons or sometimes it's an external demons but the way that external demons work or external programming works is it preys on your blind spots and your weaknesses so these are things in yourself that already exist right so if someone generally loves you it's going to be very 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 hard to convince them to hate you because they don't have that bone in their body or it's, it's very hard to wake up because they don't have that weak spot or they don't have that that wound to play to but, and this is why they say, you're only as strong as your weakest link. If you have a circle of people, and everybody is strong, but there's that one person who is, who is claiming to be a part of the group, or claiming to be a fan, who has a weakness, that needs to be removed from your circle immediately. Because then it could spread like a cancer. Right? But we're the universe's favorites, so we don't have to worry about anything spreading like anything because we're we are always protected. Never forget that. But this is just for informative purposes, because one way to get around this is through knowledge and awareness, which we'll get to later. But everybody in your circle is strong, but there was that one weak link, and all it took was an external demon, right, to come in. And to program that person by playing on their weaknesses. This person that was attracted to your life, right? I mean, they came into your life. You didn't go looking for them. They came to you. That's another thing that people forget is remember how you got here. I didn't come looking for you. I didn't come to your vicinity. I didn't become a fan of you. You came to me always remember that these people came to you okay they came to you they were gravitated towards you because your aura is strong and speaks for itself okay you had the strong aura you were like the sun where everyone could feel your rays whether they like it or not there's some people that don't like summer there's some people that don't like the sun right they don't like the daytime so, but they feel it. They feel it. So they came to you. They were gravitated towards you because you had something that they felt they wanted or needed. So they come into your circle or they come into your life or they come into your community. And they either start off as a lover or they pose as a lover. And then an external demon or their internal demons being triggered by you in some way has corrupted them because this was something that already existed within them. This is why they came to you in the first place, because they had this weakness. Some people come to you to cure this weakness and some people come to you to try to take energy from you for this weakness. Right? There was a weakness within them, an insecurity that you awakened within them or something outside of them awakened within them and used against them to go against you. People forget that they are used for agendas. People, and then these same people 
want to think that they're fighting with you. These same people want to think that that y'all are on the same level and that they're fighting a battle against you. They have to take you down and become who you are to push you out of your position. What they don't know is they're signing deals, spiritual and karmic deals with energies, agendas, and entities that are working against you because they want your spot. I don't know if some of you guys know the show Charmed, right? One of my favorite shows from when I was a kid. I loved that show. And so I started rewatching it recently. Um, and what happens is the three chosen witches, right? The three chosen ones who come together as a power of three. Triple goddess symbolism, by the way, if you're one of my fellow decoders. And all of the demons that come up against them are normally being controlled by another demon who wants the power of them or it'll be a demon that takes over a human to carry out their agenda a lot of your haters don't realize that no you're not going against me because we rank the same and we're in a genuine competition. You're going against me because you are being used. Once you are done doing what you have to do for whoever this is, whether it's an entity, an energy, a spirit, a demon, whatever, you're no longer needed. So when you are fighting or transmuting the energy about your within your haters it has nothing to do with your haters don't ever address your haters directly because that gives them the 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 feeling that this is about them it's not about you okay this is about a g agenda bigger than you will ever even realize because you're not on that frequency you're not on that path you don't have these codes. You don't have entrance to this game. Stay in your own league. This has nothing to do with you. You are a pawn in a chess game. Do you understand? A pawn has to elevate to even be able to step to the queen. Okay? You are a pawn. Don't try to come up to the queen as a pawn. And a queen doesn't go to a pawn. If a queen has a problem, she goes to her council or her guards. Okay? Don't let people who worship you put you on a pedestal and see you as a religion ever make you feel like you gotta be intimidated, pressed, stressed, or depressed. Ever. You don't need to address them directly. Tell them that they can address your team. Your spiritual team, your ancestral team, your karmic team, your universal team. Right? But this doesn't mean be a punk either. Because the way that you get around this, these types of people, they work in confusion, distortion, and in illusion what they're trying to do is they're trying to rewrite destinies timelines histories and the truth so they have to keep talking about something or they have to keep convincing themselves and other people That you are bad, evil, whatever the case may be. They have to keep notice that these types of people are constantly talking about things that they don't like or people that they don't like. Think about your food taste, right? If you don't like cheese, you're not going to eat something that has cheese in it. Imagine hating cheese, but every single day forcing yourself to eat cheese. That's how haters work. And that's why I can see why lover, the lovers and the haters is a very thin line. Because a cheese lover going to eat cheese every single day and love it. But a cheese hater, who's a secret lover, is going to eat cheese every single day. But act like they hate it. <laughs> that's a miserable life. That's very miserable. 
it's very miserable and it's very sad and it really just makes you think about the extreme amount of imbalance chemically mentally spiritually emotionally energetically that it takes for a person to be used like this and not even realize it there's a battery in their back and they don't even see it and i know the haters are probably going to listen to this one either for me or for one of y'all so let's address them directly it's very sad what you're doing. It's very sad that you're being used as a pawn in a huger game that you don't even realize and you think that you're gonna get a good payout, but once you're done, you're getting scrapped. Think about everybody that has tried to go against me or one of my universe's favorites that are listening to this right now. Where are they? Are they still here? Are they still fighting the good fight or are they worn out because they knew that me and my favorites, my other universe's favorites, we have the stamina and the strength to keep going. We have the abundance to keep paying for it too. So eventually somebody's going to have to back down and I know it's not going to be us. Exactly. So bow out gracefully. Okay, that's how you have to start addressing these people, right? They're sad cases. I don't want no. We don't want no war with them because that's a, that's a, that's that's such a, a a petty fight. It's like it, it's sad. I, I can't fight you. That's like me fighting a dog. Unless it's a big. Oh my god, I'm getting. But yeah, it's like me fighting a little. Trying to really get my good one in with a chihuahua. Trying to get good licks in on a chihuahua. That that's crazy. Show me to your owner. Show me to the person who owns you, the agendas that own you, the reason why you really hear barking. Okay? So that's the lovers to the haters pipeline. There are people who got corrupted and are being used for agendas. But the way that you kill that is through awareness. This video, this lecture, is for you to now be aware Okay, and the second part to this lecture where we talk about the evil eye, I'm going to tell you guys how you can know that this is happening against you and what to do to really go around it. But the first step to getting around it is awareness, knowing. Because that puts you back in the game. That makes you realize, oh, this is not about this. This is not me. This is something else. So I have to fight in honor of self and in honor of my mission and in honor of my family, right? Because we got things to lose, but they're not going to be lost, right? Okay. So I love you guys. Please check in um, on the second part of the lecture if you're interested in knowing how to work around this type of stuff. Keep being great. Keep being the universe's favorites. That's why they don't like you. That's why they envy you because they want your spot. They want to be a favorite too. But what they don't understand is they can become a favorite. There's still time to become a favorite, right? But that's up to you, right? They got to repent first and then they can become a favorite. But if not, they're going to have to stay on the losing team, okay? All right, I love you guys. Don't forget to check the pinned comment. All right.